Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh And salam sejahtera Okay, today meeting we like to start uh, with a topic of week number 2 Okay, and from your course information if you go through the weekly schedule uh, it clearly state that the intention of week number 2 uh, we're going to learn about electrostatic field. So now we are discussing about field specifically. Okay, as what we have done before, just we go to rev doing revision on the tools that we're going to utilize uh, in our study. But now in week number two, we're going to study the field uh, specifically. And uh, the first step, the field that we're going to discuss is what you expected. We call it electrostatic field. And we already should know the reason why. Uh, we want to simplify the learning process rather than we talk about electromagnetic as what intended by this particular subject. We start with something simpler, which is electrostatic field. And Two main objectives here we want to do. First, we like to uh, introduce the source of the field, what type of source that generate the field, and then we're going to apply certain law uh, to determine the field given uh, various type of source. So that should be two main objectives we like to do for this particular week. Okay, if you, for those who already bought the books, okay, our textbook, I'm going to show you the textbook here. So that should be the book that we go, should already buy. So the textbook. So if you go to the content, okay, the content, as you, you can see now, electrostatic going to be uh, part two part of the books, okay? Uh, for the part one, just discussing about the tools that we're going to use throughout the course. So that done last week already. So part two is going to discuss about the field. And the first field that we're going to discuss is known as electrostatic. So actually the sequence of our syllabus is following the textbook. For those who already bought the textbook, I'd like to uh, sincerely say thank you to those what you bought the books, so you are helping us actually to improve our course. Okay, so let's go on now. So we're going to uh, discuss about the pre-assigned objective first. Uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to ask ourselves what is electrostatic field. Okay, let's see ourselves what is electrostatic field. Okay, so from the word electrostatic, actually we can extract two definitions. First, I'm going to define what is electro. So that should be our first task here. Okay, electro meant, uh, give a meaning that this particular field only contain electric field only. So meaning that throughout this particular case, whenever we deal with electrostatic field, the only field concerned to us is only electric field only. Okay? So that's what I mean by electro. So meaning that only one field going to be appear in our study, which is electric field only. So in this case, we're not going to deal with any magnetic field. Okay, because why? We are in the world of electrostatic. So electro, in this case, meant for us to assume the field of concern is only electric field. The second part of the word, static. Okay, static have a meaning such that if I plot a graph of field, let's say the field indicated by E, okay? E is electric field. So let's take it in terms of the 
the magnitude. I want to plot it with respect to time. Okay, so at a certain position in space, okay, regard with time, the field at that particular position will remain constant throughout the time. So meaning that at one particular position, the field appear at that particular position remain constant throughout any time. In other words, the field is independent of time. Therefore, any terms with respect to time, we're going to ignore for this type of field. What is it? Electrostatic field. So our field here is only concerned with position. So therefore, if I'm saying my field to be electric field intensity, having the symbol vector E, so it only depends on, if I'm using Cartesian coordinate, only depend on variable X, Y, and Z. There's no T. But if I'm dealing with the problem based on cylindrical coordinate, the vector E going to be depending on variable R, phi, and Z. Also, no T involved in our calculation. Logically, if I'm dealing with a problem based on spherical coordinate, our E only going to be based on variable R, theta, and phi. So, no time in our problem to be considered. So, in other way, we are simplifying the learning process. Why? Two reasons. First, the field of interest only involves one component of field. To be specific, it's known as electric field. The second characteristic that makes our learning process simpler, the field of interest is independent of time. So by having this behavior, we are simplifying our learning process regarding electromagnetic field. We are simplifying the problem. But remember, the same concept that we built here still can be used when we talk about electromagnetic field at the end of the course with slight adjustment. Because why? In electromagnetic field, two fields exist and both fields are independent of time. Okay, so that's the reason why we start the course with, with studying the getting specific type of field known as electrostatic field. Okay, so let's go on now regarding the source. How this field can be generated? The source or sources. Okay, what type of field or what type of source that can generate this electrostatic field? So the common behavior of the source, as mentioned in the textbook, going to be stationary charge. So the charge must be stationary. Not only charge, the charge must remain fixed, not moving. If the charge is moving, we call it to be current. And current, not a source for electrostatic field. So to produce electrostatic field, the charge must remain stationary. And now we want to develop model because we cannot see the actual charge we have to develop model. When, when we develop model, we're going to relate that model with special language. We call it mathematical equation. So in our study, we're going to categorize the source to be in four types. Okay, the first type of source that we're going to define, okay, type number one, we call it point charge. Yeah? A point charge. This should be the first type of source for electrostatic. And the way we represent point charge in terms of diagram is going to be just a circular structure. So that represents our point charge. So when we have this, so we need to represent first the magnitude, 
usually we're going to define the charge having a Q magnitude or Q symbol and the unit for this charge is coulombs or in other words we're going to write the symbol as C the unit of the charge Q coulombs okay very simple that's how we're going to represent the first type of source for electrostatic a point charge the second source that we're going to see throughout the course we call it to be line charge. Okay, so now from the name itself, we're going to represent our source now as a line. It can have any shape. The line can be any shapes. It's ambiguous or uh, it's not specific. It can be any shape. Okay, two information I can extract from this diagram. First, the amount of charge it carries, we call it total charge. It's what we used pre previously to define the magnitude of charge in a point charge, we call it carries Q charge or Q coulomb. Similarly, I'm going to define the total charge here to be Q as well. Just to indicate the total value of magnitude of charge it carries. Okay. The second information that we can extract, the total length. So we call it to be L. So whenever you deal with line charge, we always observe two inf important information. First, what is the amount of charge, the total amount of charge that particular source carries, which is the total charge. Second, how, what is the actual total length of the, prob the line charge? We call it total length. Okay, so what is important now, we have to assume the line charge is something very big in structure, very large. In EMT study, whenever we deal with something that very large, we need to do what we call it to take sample. We call it sampling because we have to deal with something known as taking sample. Okay, that's what you have to understand because we are dealing with something very large and point charge that we assume before something that very small. So therefore, what you have to do now, you have to take sample. Okay, if, if you're taking sample, you can see now sample, which is duplicating the behavior of the point charge that we define up there because point charge is something small. So actually a line consists of many, many point charge. Okay, so each point charge is what we drawn here, we call it sample. Sample meaning that we are taking small part of that line charge to duplicate the behavior of point charge that we define in our first category of electrostatic field. Okay, remember line charge assumed to be very large structure. Okay, therefore, we have to take sample because now we are duplicating the behavior of a point charge. So, since now, what we have defined earlier, the line charge having the total charge Q, based on our model now, this point charge becoming our sample is going to have very small amount of charge. Therefore, in calculus, we define that to be D. Q to explain to us because we are taking sample of the line charge. Therefore, that particular sphere representing the point charge or our sample should have a very small amount of Q on it. And then from the dimension itself, we can see clearly this DQ is proportional on the DL. The longer the length, 
the more charge that sample carries. The shorter the length, the less amount of charge that sample carries. So logically, that particular sample, amount of charge it carries must depend on the physical dimension that we've seen from the diagram since line charge going to be depending on the actual length of that sample. So to write in terms of mathematics, because what we say is proportional, so in terms of mathematics, we can rewrite this equal to, now we put into equal, so I'm going to introduce a constant now, rho L, and then we're going to write in terms of this. So we just rewrite in terms of mathematical equation. From proportionality, we convert into equality, and then we're going to add a constant term there known as rho subscript L, and this term, we call it to be known as line charge density. Okay, and it has specific unit for it. We call it Coulomb per meter. Okay, why? Because we know our total charge or our charge should carry the unit Coulomb. Our dimension, which is length, should carry a unit meter. Therefore, rho L should have a unit known as Coulomb per meter. Okay, so now if I'm being asked to relate be, to, to equate between the total charge and the sample, so if I'm being asked, please find the total charge carried by our line charge. Okay. What should be the total charge of this line charge now? So I'm going to ask myself Q. So Q actually, what we can see here is the summation of all the sample of charge that exists on this line charge. You have to sum this sample, then you have to sum with this sample to this sample, and by summing all the sample exists on this line charge, we are actually calculating the total charge on that line charge. And since this sample is continuous, so the summing should be represented by the symbol of integration. And then we are sampling somewhat now, we are summing the, the sample. And then in terms of mathematics, we can rewrite this to be equal to rho L D L. Okay, so that should be uh, the equation we use or we need to use in order to determine the total charge carries by a line charge structure. Okay, so I'm going to go to the third type of source now. So it's going to be repetitive now. It's going to repeat what we have seen for the second source, known as line source, line charge. Okay, the third source that we're going to deal in this particular discussion, we call it to be surface charge. Okay, so let's draw a surface. Okay, our surface should be non-specific and very thin thickness. Okay, two information that we would like to extract from the surface charge should be the first one going to be the total charge. And then we're going to define that to be Q coulombs. The second information that we're going to define should be the total area. 
Okay, so that should be the one that we're going to define. So how we work with this type of source? Again, we take sample, and our sample is representing small structure. So now my sample now, I'm going to draw to be residing on my source, which is a surface structure. So this sample, as what we can know, it should be having the magnitude d, d cube. Because why? Small amount of charge. And mathematically, we can see our d cube, depending on the size of our sample. Okay? Because now it's area, no more line. So if I want to write in terms of equality, my dq now, I'm going to rewrite equal to rho s d s. You can see the difference between line charge and surface charge. These are the symbol of subscript use. The subscript that we use for line charge, we call it L. Now the subscript to represent our surface charge sample, we call it rho s. And the name also slightly changed now. Before we call it line charge density. Now we call it to be surface charge density. And therefore, should we change the unit as well? The answer is yes. The unit now should be Coulomb per meter square. Why? Because now our dimension having the unit of meter square. Okay, so if you want to find the total charge now, how do I find the total charge? So I'm going to say to myself, very simple, it should be equal to, I'm going to sum all the sample that exist on this structure. Therefore, I have to sum them. So it continues, I have to use the symbol of integration. Now I'm going to sum all the samples. Now, in terms of mathematics now, should be rho s d s. And now we can see the mathematics become more complicated because we have to deal with surface integration or in other words, we call it double integration. So the, the mathematics become more complex a bit, but yet it follows the same concept. Okay, so therefore, it's important to see mathematics is the language that we extracted based on our structure. We should not memorize it. We can see from this structure involve two dimensions. Therefore, the mathematics we should use to do in this calculation involve double integration. So there's a logic you must always see. So it's not difficult. Uh, so the problem always based on I mean, the interpretation of mathematics always come back into the actual structure that we have to dealt with. Okay, so we go to the last source. So, I mean, by now you can see the logic now, I believe that. So last structure that we're going to uh, try to look into going to be volume charge. Okay, I'm going to draw a cloud. Okay, again, what information that we should able to extract from the, the diagram going to be the first one, what should be the volume dimension. The second one, what is going to be the total charge. So the total charge here, I'm going to call it to be Q Coulomb to be consistent. Again, we take sample. Okay, the sample must be carrying a much of dq, but what we can see now, the dq is depending on amount of dq is depending on the physical dimension should be the volume. Okay. So by now, you, I hope you can see the logic. We're going to rewrite dq equal to rho v dv. And then the rho v here, we call it to be known as volume charge density. And the unit here should be Coulomb per meter cube. 
if I want to find what should be my total charge carried by that volume structure, should be integration of dq. And now you can see should be involving mathematics wise rho v dv and therefore should be triple integration now in our actual problem solving. So what we can see now, if I'm asking myself, how does what, uh, how do the thing that we are studying now relate to our previous revision? You can see now the symbol involved is dv. And based on our previous uh, revision, we know that dv very dependent on the coordinate system. What do you mean by that? If the structure here relate to a Cartesian coordinate problem, for example, a box, we can substitute dv here with the substitution of dx, dy, and dz. Remember the handout two that we uh, referred to before? So that should be the one we substitute into. If the problem is a cylinder now, what should be the dv we use to substitute here then? Yes, should be r, dr, d phi, dz. And if we are dealing with a sphere's problem, so the dv we need to place now should be r square sine theta dr, d theta, d phi. So that's the logic why we need to actually go through the revision properly because when we want to solve the actual EMT problem, we need to use the information based on the tools that we already talked about before. Okay, so then it should be what we see, the relationship between what we learn now with what we have done last week. So I'm going to go now, I'm going to do examples. So this example is taken from handout number three. I hope by now you're already able to download it. So we have a lot here. Okay, let's do the problem number one. Okay, the problem number one. So let's read it together now. The problem state, determine the total charge contained in a line charge distribution x, y, z, and then it's not constant, is a varying distribution, meaning that it contains x variable, y variable, and z. So it's non-constant distribution. And you can see the unit here, Coulomb per meter, supporting our argument, we are dealing with line charge issue. Extending from 3 to 1 to 5, 4, 7. So by looking at the function here, x, y, z, I can assume now this variable also relate to the same definition, which should be x, y, z. So therefore, this problem I have to solve using which coordinate system? Yes, Cartesian coordinate system. Because that should be the logical thing I can see from the question. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's solve this together. Should be very simple, inshallah. Yeah, I believe most of you don't have to watch this video to, 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 to solve the problem. You can solve yourself, okay? So number one, solution. Okay, so what we have now? So we have two point charges, one located here. So the variable given is three, two, one. Another point given, let's say make it here, is five, four, seven. I'm going to show you again. So the line charge is doing what? Is extending, meaning that it's moving. So moving from this point to this point. 
So the question does not mention how the movement should be. Dependent on you, you can assume it to be this pattern or this pattern or any pattern that you want to be. So, but remember, when you want to solve EMT problems, so this is always the case makes students feel uncomfortable. It's not clear. So therefore, we, as the person who wants to solve the problem, always try to define, to assume, to make the problem become simpler, okay? Or become easier. Because that's our choice. It's not defined clearly how uh, the pattern of our line to be. So logically, to make this particular problem simple, even though not mentioned by the question, we should assume it to be a straight line. Okay, extending, but not mentioned how. So I just want to make it simple by assuming the line to be straight. So this based on our assumption. Therefore, when you solve problem in EMT, the solution that you're getting might be different than mine because the way you assume something different, okay? Therefore, it's nothing wrong. But important thing is that you must state clearly your assumption so that we can see, okay? Even though your answer is slightly different than mine, but still not wrong, okay? So that's what engineering is all about, okay? You can have different solutions between one engineer to other engineers based on their own interpretation. But that definition, that essence must be shown clearly so that people can agree with you rather than blame you. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Eh? So we assume it's going to be straight. Why? Because we know straight lines easier for us to calculate later on rather than something not straight. Okay, this line charge, I'm going to write it nicely now. Having uh, density rho L equal to 2x plus 3y minus 5z coulomb per meter. Okay, so what the question asks us to do? Find the total charge. So the total charge. Symbol-wise, we know it should be Q. And based on our model that we discussed earlier, yeah, it must obey this particular equation. So what we have to do, we are taking sample. I'm going to take sample here. So that should be my sample my dq, and I know that my dq now can be sum uh, along the line, so going to be rho l dl, okay? And I'm using Cartesian coordinate. So let's substitute now. So therefore, should be equal to integration I'm going to substitute for my rho L equal to 2x plus 3y minus 5z. That should be my rho L. How about dL? So dL here, what should be what then? Okay, so to answer what should be the dL substitute here, I have to go back to the definition of our Cartesian coordinate that we defined earlier. Remember that when you talk about DL in Cartesian, okay, let's talk about that. So in Cartesian, we see that DL vector equal to what? Remember? Anyone can... Uh, Okay, I'm sure some of you already know that should be equal to dx, x directions plus dy, y direction plus dz, z directions. Agree? Okay, so the dl here, what does it say to me? So he says something that deal with magnitude. Okay, agreed? 
So there's no direction there, it's a magnitude. So now we have a vector here, and from our handout number one, we be able to extract the information of magnitude. How we do it? So where we are saying the DL, the magnitude is equal to the square root of dx square plus dy square plus dz square. Agreed. Okay, that's how we define the magnitude. And now we see in this model, we are dealing with magnitude only. So logically, what I have to do then, I need to substitute here with only with the term dx square plus dy square plus dz square. But yet, when I look into this integration, it only involves one variable. Yet, in my actual equation, there are three variables, x, y, and z. What we should do then? Because here, the integration only involves how many variables? One. So I cannot have x, y, and z. It can only be either x, or y, or z. Therefore, I need to convert this equation to become only one variable equation. Okay, so which one that you want to be then? X, Y, or Z? To be the final variable involved in this particular calculation. Okay, let's take it as X. So I'm going to say X should be my selected variable at the end. So X start from where? X start from 3, correct? Ending at what? 5. Can we do that? So meaning that we only focus on x of our selected integration range. So what I have to do now, I have to convert y into x. Okay? Because the final integration variable involves only x, so logically we have to convert y into x. So how we do it? Very simple, based on the shape of our line charge. Okay, I want to relate now. So I want to convert y now. Okay, convert y into x. Okay, so we can see very simple straight line. So we can use the uh, slope of the line. So I'm going to say now, okay, this is the point here consists of x, y, z. So I'm going to say to myself, x minus 3 divide with y minus 2 going to be equal to 5 minus 3 divide with y. 4 minus 2. Agree. So this should be equal to 1. Okay? So now what I have now, x minus 3 equal to y minus 2. Or we can finally say y equal to x minus 1. So therefore, what we can do now, we can, alhamdulillah, we substitute this y with x minus 1. Okay? You do that. So I'm going to put symbol here. This should be now x minus 1. Okay, okay. you can repeat the same step with the z now. Okay. The z. So, what I'm going to do then? So, I'm going to convert z into x. So, repeat the same process. Okay. Z 
minus 1 over x minus 3 equal to 7 minus 1 over 5 minus 3. Okay, so this should be equal to what? F 6 over 2 and then this should be equal to 3. So therefore z minus 1 equal to 3x minus Nine. And Z should be equal to three X minus eight. Okay, so you can place now at this particular component with 3x minus 8. So, yeah, we're going to look now into this term. Okay, I have to convert now in terms of x only, so I'm going to take the dx out from this square root pattern so we can mean dx therefore it will become 1 because I'm taking it out plus now this should be defined as dy over dx squared and the, this third term going to be dz over dx squared so that should be the logical thing I do uh, to convert that particular equation term into x component so therefore I can see I need to know what should be dy over dz equal to so here sorry dx I can see dy over dx should be equal to what? 1 okay so I can substitute dy dx here with 1 value for dz over dx so I'm going to say to myself dz over dx should be equal to what here equal to 3 if I'm going to add the term here to be 3 so by doing that we have already converted all the term in terms of x. So you can, inshallah, determine what should be the solution will be. Okay, give a try. Okay, that's why it's important for you when you solve electromagnetic problem or EMT. Uh, anything you substitute, anything that you want to uh, change must always based on proper concept eh? like for example in this case when you want to substitute for the dl we go back to the concept of vector based on the dl that we defined earlier and then all these things based on simple mathematics okay i think that's uh, enough for us to discuss today regarding the source uh, of uh, electrostatic field for those who want more challenging question you can go through the example yourself there's a lot here and also you can do problem based or given by our textbook with that i'd like to say thank you very much inshallah see you again in our next video assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh